Guitar and Excel, open chords, C major scale, G major chord on A, C scale. Get ready, because it's time for our guitar skills to Excel. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay, because we basically built this from a blank worksheet, but we started in a prior presentation. So if you want to build this from a blank worksheet, you may want to begin back there. However, you don't necessarily need access to this workbook if looking at this from a music theory standpoint, because we will simply use it as a tool to map out the fretboard, give us the scale and related chords that we are focused in on. If you do have access to this workbook though, there's currently five tabs down below. We've got three example tabs, an OG tab and a blank G tab. The OG tab representing the original worksheet we put together in a prior section, it now acting as our starting point going forward. We've got the entire fretboard here. We've got the entire musical alphabet mapped out in both letters, numbers, as well as both letters and numbers. We have our key, which is is adjustable by this green note we can change it from a c or four to an 11 or g back to a four for example which will help us to construct our worksheets on the right hand side providing us the scale and chords that we are focused in on we then copied over the og tab to focus where we want to focus this time which is in the key of c major and then breaking down the c major into its components looking at each note in the c major scale and then building chords from the c major scale uh, on them starting of course with the one which is a c major chord in the c major scale that is represented in example c tab we then minimized or hid many of the columns so we just see the open position we mapped out the c on our fretboard noting that this string represents the low string or heavy string the one closest to the ceiling and there is our C shape. We mapped it on top of the pentatonic scale in the key of C and the major scale and so on. And we analyzed it from there. We did a similar process for the F chord, which is built off of the four note in the key of C. So we're still thinking of ourselves in the key of C, but then we jumped to the four. We jumped to the four instead of the two or the three first because the one, four, five will construct major chords and the two three six will construct minor chords and we want to put those two types of chords together so we will see similarities when we start mapping out the shapes so we're still in the key of c but now we're looking at the four which is an f chord we saw it on top of the c major pentatonic scale as well as the c major uh scale and then we talked about that now we're doing a similar process for the chord of G and let's go to the blank tab because this is where we're going to start uh, going forward. So we did a similar process here. We're still thinking of ourselves in the key of C. That's important because when you're kind of strumming around with this stuff, you want to be thinking all the notes that I'm playing are the notes in the key of C. It just so happens that I'm focused around three notes that construct a G major chord but I constructing it from the C major scale in this uh, case. We then minimized the fretboard looking at just the first three frets. We mapped out the G chord. So this is the shape of the G chord that you wanna have kind of in your mind because that's another shape that you can kind of ground yourself with as uh, we think about moving the shapes up, for example. And we're on uh, the five chord. We're on the five chord instead of going to the two or three, just like we did with the four chord, because the five chord here, when we construct it, will be a major chord. We construct it from the C major scale. You could start here on the five and then take every other note in the C scale, which would be a B and then a D. Now, remember that when we number these notes, we're going to number it a one, three, five of the G. Those numbers are relative to the G as if we constructed this from a G. So if I go back on over here to the OG tab, I change this to a G, which is an 11. Now I have this worksheet in the key of G. I get the same notes now in the one position, G, B, D, which I can see here, G, B, D as the one, three, five. So if I go back to my blank tab, G, B, D, I'm calling it one, three, five, instead of calling it a, a five, uh, seven, 
2, uh, which is what we actually constructed it from in the C scale because that's the tradition that we do. But remember, we kind of think about it in intervals. So I'm basically saying this is the 1 because I'm thinking about that as my root. And then the 3 is a major third away or 4 notes away. And then the 5 is 7 notes away. That's another way you could think of what does it mean to say it's a 1, 3, 5. Okay, we'll talk more about that later though. We then took that position and we we're now want to map it on top of the pentatonic scale. So that's going to be our process here and then we'll map it on top of the major scale. Now as we do this, we want to keep in mind that when we look at it in terms of the pentatonic scale, we're looking at it in terms of the C pentatonic scale. And uh, we could think of it as though we're switching when I'm going from the, when the one note to the five note, switching entirely to the G, which means you can visualize the G scale on top of it. But that's not what we're doing right now. We're visualizing the G that we can play inside of the C, uh, the C major scale. Now, it doesn't exactly fit in the pentatonic scale because we had to remove two notes here. So what we, what we have here in green is the pentatonic scale for the C major pentatonic scale in the open position. I would call it position number four, but we'll get to pentatonic numbering later. You could start to just visualize that scale and start fingering it you know, up and down, but that's not really our objective here. Our objective here is to see that the, the G would fit in the C major scale. Now it doesn't quite fit in this pentatonic scale. So you'll note that this note right here is actually not in the pentatonic scale. The pentatonic scale is made of these uh, five notes and that B is the seven. That's one of the notes that we remove. So when you're kind of noodling around with this, if you picked up that G, if you think about the pentatonic scale, you could play the pentatonic scale and still pick up that B if you're playing kind of like the five because the B will be related to the chord that you're, that you're basically uh, playing in. So from a practical standpoint, then you might, how could you use this? You might be saying, let's make this. Uh, uh, so, so remember, we're kind of thinking about this as though it's in the, the, key of C. So one way you can do this is you can start you can start noodling around with what we've done thus far, a C, an F, and a G. Remember that we want to think of the C as the tonic is what we're G, is what we would normally start with, meaning I'm playing around the C most of the time, and then I can shift to a G to an F and then a G and then back to a C. And see how C kind of feels like home right there and so and then as you're as you're kind of doing that you can reveal anything you want because i'm i'm imagining all of this being inside of basically the g major scale more uh specifically in this case the pentatonic scale so as i'm playing any of those uh chords i can always lift up a finger because i'm always thinking of them as being built from the c major scale and all of these open notes are in uh in that in that scale so if i so if i copy this g down let's copy this g and i'm going to say copy put that here and put that here and put that here and then put that here so we have that, and then I'll make these ones red, just so you can see that's the one that's outside of the pentatonic scale. So, so, then, so then anything that we're playing here, I can always lift up a finger. And then when I get to here, I can play it this way. That's the G, one way to play it. You can play it this way. And remember, you have some options with this finger down here. I could lift up my finger and reveal the E. The E's not in this chord, but it's in the shape. So that would be revealing a 13 if you ring it out. Or I can, I can mute it and I can play the D. So you can kind of lift that finger up as well. Now, if you, if you look at 
uh, this shape, you'll note that I have like these strings up top that I could I couldn't play around with. So if if I was going from a C here to here, and then I can go here, right? And you can start to like noodle around in this position. And I would say that I would actually imagine it as though I'm kind of noodling with just these notes because then because the open notes always fit so so no matter which i'm playing right i can be switching from a from a c to an f to a g right and i can kind of noodle within those notes and do whatever i want to do you know within those notes you'll also note that these three are are something that you can noodle around with and now i'm saying i'm going to add that b even though it's outside of the pentatonic scale I'm, i can imagine it as the pentatonic scale with that added b when i'm on the key of g right because that should fit you can also imagine this remember that i can say if i don't want to keep on going back to the c as the tonic and i just want to practice in this g position I can start to see these notes as basically, so, so that means I'm going to change this to the tonic. I'm not going to switch to the key of G. I'm still going to be playing in the key of C, but this is like my tonic, right? Which is going to be a mode. Remember that if I go to the right and look at the modes, I can look for the mode with a G in it. So let's do that over here. If I go, okay, the one that starts with a G in the mode is going to be do -do 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 here, Mixolydian. And if I hide this mixolydian, I'm going to put it next to then the major this time. So we'll say, D -d 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 -d. let's try to uh, keep my circle. And then I hide all that stuff. Uh, so now I've got the mixolydian. Let's make this a little bit smaller. And you can see you basically have the same thing here, right? So now you're playing, this is the one you still have the 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 notes that are going to be the one four five as the capital representing that they're constructed a major chord and here's over here it's the one four seven you still get the g you get the uh you get the c and then you get the f so you can see it either way i think when people are starting out it's easier to just say okay i'm just going to play this this g <laughs> same notes but act like it's the root and then again and then if you're doing that you can start to noodle in here i could start saying see all i'm doing is noodling these three notes in the middle between playing a g double stop you can put double stop with one open and one not open you can play all three together hammer on hammer off and then and then you can do the same thing with any other uh position you can add this one in there and then you can play it within there now you could do the same let's do the same thing down here if i add the full the full position here let's see if i can uh let's see if i can copy these i'm gonna say duh duh to, 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 to copy those and put them like down here. Oh, no, I didn't copy it. The copy the, I'm holding down control and selecting these. And then I'm going to paste control V paste down here. All right, and then I'm going to drag these on top. So now they look like that now if i look at this this is the full c major scale so now i'm in the c major scale so now of course all three of these notes fit inside because i constructed this from the c major scale so again you could do the same kind of thing here and and pick out some areas where you'd want to focus so there's that little box again that we keep focusing in on which is kind of a fun little area to play in so I could say, right, and if you're just doing, if you're just starting from a G, then. Right. Now 
I'm going to a C and I'm just still playing that little box because I know that box is good no matter what I play. I can play anything in here when I'm switching between these three notes. So if I start with a C, F, G, back to a C, right? So, and then you could do the same with any of these uh, any box that you want, right? Down here is a, the other kind of little position we were playing with before. So if I was just playing a G, and this might be an easier one to play it this way, right? Because if you play it this way, I'm using this finger as my pivot. So I could then play my G like that. And now I have my finger is right on here because I'm using that as my pivot even though I'm actually playing this string in the G. same little thing down down on this over all three of them because I'm imagining myself basically in uh, the key of C and sometimes you might if you don't play that full G because you could you could noodle just down here and say well I, you know I'm kind of playing a G right here by just holding down you know I could just play these these no these open notes basically and I'm playing like a G because this is like the open G string right here so if I just keep on ham like playing that that open string, you can have kind of some fun just down here. And your home bass is that is that G string, which is going to basically be uh, be closing it out. Grabbing this A now, I'm adding that into my my little pattern, right? So if I grab that A, see, I'm kind of resolving to that G right there, which is kind of just these open strings, the G right here, D G B, but I'm sometimes I'm not picking up that D, and I'm just picking up the G and the B, so it resolves when I just play those two open. I don't know. So anyways, you can you can noodle around with different things like that and and then use all of these notes in the th as you're kind of going between these three notes and again at this point now you can think about any of them as the tonic because now you would just simply be switching modes if you want to focus on any of these one particular chords and just kind of noodle around that chord while picking up other chords in between it or picking up other notes kind of in between as you're hitting that chord what you're doing then is basically just playing in a different mode or you're just playing the same C major scale you think of it as but you're focusing in on whichever chord that you want to focus in on which means that you're you're going back to it the most it's your home base so people's ears will naturally just see that as home so then down here uh say, this is the same thing where we have the minor chords on top of so this is the the pentatonic scale uh is is in green and then we map well we mapped first the whole major so everything that's colored is in the major scale and then we mapped on the green notes on top of it so that you can see that the green notes will fit in that's the pentatonic scale which is the green notes here that will fit inside of the major scale because that's the pentatonic scale of c 
on top of the major C scale. However, this one chord, when we map on this chord, although it fits in the major scale, because of course we constructed this chord, boom, 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 from the major scale, it does not fit in the pentatonic because that B is the seven, which is one of the notes that we pull out. So when you're thinking about playing the pentatonic scale in the key of C over the five note, the G, then you might add that B into your pentatonic. You could still think about it as pentatonic with an added B, or you can think about it as basically you're playing the major scale in the key of C, right? Uh, and then uh, we, we could also say, well, what if we were to, to think of ourselves in the key of G, just to see the, the difference here. If you were to switch this and say, what if I want to be in the key of G, well, then I can change my worksheet so the key of G is the one note in a G major scale. In that case, you could still play this, this shape, of course, because the shape of these three notes will be the same, but the scale around it will be different. And I just want to show you that by hiding some cells up top. I'm going to go from here up to this one, uh, that one, and right click and hide. So if we do that, then you, you can see that this shape is in both of them. Like I can copy, let's try to copy this again. I didn't do it very well last time. Let's copy and paste that. And you can paste that down here. And you can see that that shape is in both of them. But when you look at it in terms of the full uh, uh, major shape, this is the C major shape pentatonic shape in open positions in the first three frets this is the g major pentatonic shape in open position and you can see just from those first three that it's different now we can learn we'll talk about learning those shapes later but right now you're kind of learning the shape of the c as you as you play all this stuff because everything you play is within the c major scale and then and then we can do a similar thing and just augment what we're doing to another scale once we and every all the shapes will just shift basically all the stuff will be the same but you'll shift the shape which is still hard to do in your mind you can't just you can't just say oh i'm just going to shift the shape and every, everything will just shift in your head it won't you're going to have to think about it but it'll be easier because you already know kind of the shape built out in the c major scale so when you start like when we think about moving this shape up like we said with the one four five uh just remember that you can't necessarily move you cannot move up all of the all of the shapes around it i can move up this shape that is that is actually the the chord up according to like according to if it was the one the one four five or if i'm in the uh if i'm in the c i can move it from the five to the one uh to the four right i can move that shape up like we talked about in the prior presentation but the related notes around it will will not necessarily be the same so you can't pick around the sh that shape if i move that shape up i can't like pick around it and think that i'm still going to be picking up the notes that i want to pick up which in this case would be in the key of uh, c major because the shape around it will be different so that we'll talk more about why that is and what we can do with that later but for now just note that i would practice with these uh, notes and say now I can practice the note of a G and I can do so uh, I, ca I can do so playing it multiple different ways I can pick up my finger as I play the key of G and reveal all of the open strings as I still think of it in uh, playing the notes in the key of C I can play the key of G in uh, as if it's the five note using the C as the tonic, because I'm going to be hovering around the C, or I can pretend that the, that the five note is the tonic, even though I'm playing all the notes in the key of C, which allows me still to play the same shape around it and be feeling safe that all the open notes will work. And then, of course, I can also do that for the three notes that we've done now, the three chords. I can make the F the tonic, uh, or the G, the tonic, or the C, the tonic, right? E any of those can be my central point, and I can noodle around or off of them, right? I can say I'm always going to go back to that as my home base, 
And in between that, I'm going to go to another chord or a piece of a chord or two notes, or I'll just noodle around in a specific little area back to that particular uh, chord. And, and that'll give you, that gives you like an infinite num number of ways to play around just with what we've done thus far, right? You could, you could do basically infinite things. If you add rhythm on top of that and whatnot, and you know, picking styles and fingering styles and whatnot, that would be like an infinite number of things. So, and so that next time we'll continue on with this, but we'll go, uh, we'll do, we'll think about this more technically in terms of the intervals and whatnot, and then we'll get into the minors after that.